Well, welcome back. I'm George. And, you know, as a result of a lot of comments and, you know, calls and things like that, we decided to do a run. We're going to do a run real quick on the mighty mini that we got from Mile High. Um, they carry these in the store as well. Uh, that's a separate topic all in itself. Well, I'm here to show you how we run this thing, and we're going to do it the most basic method you possibly could. And um, we're just going to run some of the uh, George Washington rye mash that we had made. Uh, I've got some left over. So I've got about three gallons in here, and this is a three gallon still. Um, you don't want to put anything more than that in there because you need some headroom. So what we've got here is we've got, of course, the kettle, and the kettle comes with this coupler on here so you can put your heater element in it. Uh, and if you don't use a heater element, you're going to use propane. Um, it comes with uh, the cap. You just put the cap on there and seal it off. It's just like putting a plug in it. So the only thing you have to buy extra for that, if you're going to use a heater element, is you're going to have to buy this one-inch NPT uh, coupler that uh, goes on the outside, just hooks on there. So, uh, and, and that goes together real easy. And, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, on how to assemble this. There's only one way it goes together. So you shouldn't have a problem whatsoever. Uh, there's only one way. Uh, of course, we've got the column. Uh, this is the reflux chamber because this is a combination pot reflux still, but we're going to use it as a pot still. We're not going to mess with the, uh, the reflux chamber because, like I said, we're going to do it as simple as we possibly can. I've got water going in on the bottom of my uh, condenser and the water coming out from the top of the condenser. And so this is just a hose that's running in, and I've got it on a, water, a small water pump that I threw inside a cooler uh, with some water and some ice. Uh, now, the only reason I put ice in there has nothing to do with trying to get the, you know, the cold temperature. Um, it's just trying to preserve the water. You know, so the water starts off ice cold, and over a period of time, um, if, if I don't have ice in there, what happens is over a period of time, the water, because it, it keeps replenishing itself, it gets really hot. And then I start having problems and challenges with my condenser. So I just put ice in there. It just makes the water last longer, that's all. And I can run, if I put 10 pounds of ice in here, I can run this for two, two and a half hours without any problem. And I've got probably a you know, 40 quart, 50 quart water cooler. Or you can use an igloo, you know, five or 10 gallon igloo. That, those would be just fine. Uh, now the other thing that, that doesn't, it doesn't come with uh, this chemical resistant hose. I had some of that left over from uh, a couple of the other stills I had. And uh, I just cut a piece off and run it into my little jug. Now, additionally what this thing does come with those, it comes with a bag of ration rings, the ceramic ration rings, when you use it as a reflux still and you pack those in the column. Uh, and you also have an option because it also comes with about a half a pound of uh, coiled copper mesh. Uh, you just roll that out about 18 inches or so, yeah, about that far, and uh, cut it off, roll it up nice and not real tight. You want to roll it up, it'll stick it up in the column, and you'll have about four inches of, and we've talked about this before, you know, it's, a plate is a physical thing as well as a measurement. So uh, if you put, you know, one, one roll in here, you've got the equivalent of a plate. Uh, if you put two pieces in here, you've got equivalent of two plates. So about four ounces of rashing rings would be about a plate. Eh, three and a half probably, more likely. Uh, but the, with this four inches is a plate and a plate. So, so there, there you go. Uh, those folks who claim to uh, distill, like, yeah, it's triple distilled, yeah, chances are, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but chances are they've got three plates in their column or in their stack. All right, on to bigger and better things now. I've got this hooked up to the uh, PID controller. And we're going to really learn a lot about the PID controller today, too, as well. So stick with us. Um, this thing is phenomenal. It's a, I'm using a 2,000-watt heater element. And we've got that on the other video on how to make one of these and then how to wire this up because it's so straightforward and so relatively simple. Uh, and I've got my bung with my thermal couple. And you'll see how far the thermal couple stuck into that bung. So when I put it in the top of the still uh, or in the top of the column, it's just going to hang down there right inside the vapor trail, right there. So I'll turn this on, and it goes through its self-test. So right now, I'm reading 65.1 degrees in the head of my column, and I've got it set at 92. And if I push my set button once, it'll read 100, which means it's 100% power going to that heater element. Later on, as that gets closer, we'll show you more about that. But this thing is phenomenal, and it works all on its own. I just, I just sit back, and once I get it set, I auto-tune and let her run. We'll be back shortly, because it's, 
it's probably, uh, let me see, about 2 o'clock, so I'll give you an update on time on how long this takes. I anticipate it'll take about 30 to 45 minutes to get, get heated up, and then we'll run it for about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, it all depends. I, I anticipate getting probably a quart and a half out of this three gallons. Uh, it's not a real high ABV, but uh, it's a real good, smooth tasting rye whiskey. See you shortly. Well, it's been uh, 20 minutes, and we're now at 70 degrees inside the kettle. So it's a, you see, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a long, there's a lag here. There's a little bit of a long process getting heated up, but it's only going to take another 15 minutes or so, maybe 20, uh, to get this thing up to proper temperature. Uh, what will happen is, is it takes a long time to change that mass from the ambient temperature to a higher temperature. Uh, so I've got to set on 92. And, but when it gets to about 120, when, and we'll start jacking it up here pretty soon, when it gets to 120, it's going to go from 120 up to 180, lickety split if you don't watch it. So that's why I go in stages and I walk my way up to the temperature. Uh, you're much more successful that way. Now, I won't even turn on the water pump. So you see, I have no water running through the condenser. I'm just heating up the kettle right now. So why waste all that energy and time? Uh, I'll turn that on at about 130-ish, somewhere around there, just to, just to get it running. So uh, this is our update right now, and we're at 70.3, 70.2, 70 70.3. So I'll be back with you shortly, and uh, we'll let you know when we get to the right temperature. Well, it's been 35 minutes, and we're now at 124 degrees. I got it set at 120, so it's going to bounce around for a little while until it kind of settles itself out. So we're going to pump this temperature up in just a few minutes, and then I'll turn my water pump on. But I want to show you what we're going to actually do here today. So the concept, and just briefly, is you know when you're when you're going to distill, what we're going to do, we had an, we, it's called an azotropic blend of alcohol and water in here, and so they scientifically they call it an azotropic blend. Uh, we're going to separate those. Um, now we're going to also take some water out. Now I'm using doing a regular pot still. I'm going to get I'm anticipating 135, 140 proof. Uh, when you're doing a reflux, you're going to strip a lot of water, you're going to strip a lot of flavor out, and you'll wind up with a really high proof. Um, that, but at the end of the day, remember we talked about this once before about volumes. Um, if I have 180 proof and I have 140 proof, you're only going to get so much out of here. Now, if I get uh, half a quart at 180 proof, that's like getting a quart at 130 proof. Um, you, you, get, you follow my drift here, it's, but I'm going to re retain all the flavors that, that are inside my mash. So what happens is, is as this starts to heat up, it generates all this heat and the ethanol starts to boil out early. And now water boils at 212 degrees. We're never going to get to 212 degrees. We don't want the water to boil out, but some water will be attached to the molecules and they'll transfer with it as well. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll travel up this column, and when they get to the top of the column, they've got nowhere else to go except through this small pipe, and this is known as my shotgun condenser. And they call it a shotgun condenser for obvious reasons. It looks like a shotgun barrel. Uh, and through this condenser, all I've got to do now is I've got to cool those vapors from their vaporization point of 172, 173 degrees. And then as this changes, of course, that temperature is going to change. Uh, and we'll explain that later too. Uh, all I've got to do is drop it down below that temperature, probably about 20 degrees below that temperature, which normally tap water is absolutely fine. It's, it, it's probably the best temperature. Uh, again, I'm using ice water just to retain all this water. Uh, but when I drop that temperature, those vapors are going to recondense and then they're going to come out this tube and drop into the bottle. That's all there is to it. Now remember, I have no packing in the column. We're doing it as basic and as simple as we possibly can and very straightforward. Now, I know most, a lot of you may send in questions and comments. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Look, we're going to get to all of that again. Uh, we've done it before. We'll do it again, and uh, we'll walk you through the whole process. So, again, like us, share us, uh, subscribe, and get all the updates. What the heck? Hey, we'll be back shortly. Is uh, We're going to turn, turn this up and then turn the water pump on, and the next time you're back with us, we should have something running. We're up to about 145-ish or so, so remember I told you the methanol starts to come off first, and I've got a spoonful here, and I'm just going to light it and show you what I'm talking about. We're going to do a methanol test, and I'll light that, 
and I can feel, oh, Al, I can feel the flame, and I'm not sure you can see that. You see the yellow? Okay, that's, that's methanol. And sh shortly here, we're gonna, we'll test it again in a few moments. Look at that yellow flame. Now, you're gonna get some yellow on the very, very tip, but you can see a good majority of that is yellow, so that's, uh, that's methanol burning. Be very, very careful with this. Uh, the next couple times we test it, we'll get to the point to where it's either blue or transparent. And that'll be ethanol. So that's one quick, easy way to test. Be back with you in a moment. Well, we're still at 145, uh, and we're holding it there right now. I was going to go to 165, but uh, it's starting to come off. And uh, so now it's time to do that test again. Ouch. Uh, it's, you see that? Now you see how, how blue it is? Now that is methanol. I mean, I'm sorry, it's ethanol. So we're going to blow that out. Now I can start to crank this up and start running it right now because all my methanol is gone. Uh, right now I'm pumping out pure ethanol and it's, it's coming out at 145. So I've got a lot going on in there. Matter of fact, no, I'm at 152 right now. So let's crank this thing up a little bit and I'll be right back. All right, you can see here now we're at, I've got it set at 179, and I've found that each still has a particular range that it operates best at. So, and mine actually operates right about 179, so I'm bouncing around between 182 and back down to 179, and my PID's figuring all that out for me, so it's maintaining my temperature. Now, I wanted to show you this because this is an, this is an interesting part. This is why I like the my pin. We're going to check the PI and D settings because I did an auto tune. To auto tune if you just push the blue button and hold it, and I'm doing that right now, and you'll see there's a small green light that comes on. That's the auto tune light. And once it tunes, it'll turn that light off by itself. And so now I'm going to push the set button and hold it for about three seconds and it'll go into the parameters. So if I start running down through there's AL1, AO1, AL2, AO2, PUF, and we've done this before. Input is a Y, the K coupler, and then my P is at 0.49. When I put these together, I'll set it at 1, but it's at 0.49. It's already auto-tuned itself for this process. The I is set at 3. I'll set them at 240, and then after you auto-tune it, it'll set itself, because uh, each one's going to be different. And then my D is 0 0.75. I'll set that at 240 as well. But uh, when I auto-tune it, it, it'll adjust it back down to 0.75 or whatever's necessary. And then uh, I'll just push and hold the set button after that, and it goes back to reading my temperature. And it's controlling that temperature through that PID and providing the power necessary to maintain that temperature so that I get a clear run out of my shine. Now, last but not least, because we're going to end it about right here, I just wanted to show you, I've got oh, probably about a quarter of a quart right now. It's getting a little bit higher and it's starting to run really good. I've been at this for an hour and 12 minutes. An hour and 12 minutes since I turned on the PID and the heater element. So that kind of gives you a gauge on running a three, the mile high three gallon mighty mini. Uh, what else can I say? Happy distilling. Yeah.